da di da di da di da da di da What do you hear over the air? CQ serenade. So you don't know just what it means. Dust your shoes off, shake out your jeans. Get on your feet, jump to the beat of CQ serenade. Greetings, this is Spec Ops 56, also known as Kilo Foxtrot 4, Charlie Zulu Victor, General Class Ham. And my good friend, fellow ham and radio enthusiast, John. I'm Kilo Kilo 4, Foxtrot Bravo Victor. And this is our latest restoration project. Uh, now, I, I apologize for not getting this from the beginning of the restoration. It's just something I overlooked. Uh, we've, we've begun the restoration. We're, we're almost at the point of uh, doing the testing. But I thought I would go ahead and show it to you anyway and give you a little overview of it. Kind of show you what we've done so far and what we still need to do. And I will try to document our progress uh, along the way from this point onward. So uh, I'm going to shut off right now so I can position the camera, the tripod a little bit closer so it'll be easier to, for you to see right about now. Okay, this is the power supply and speaker that goes with this National NCX3 HF rig. Uh, as you can see, we have replaced all the filter capacitors, we've replaced a few other things, and um, you know, tested everything else, so the power supply should be working well. We did try to test earlier with uh, by having it connected to the to the uh, receipt to the, the the rig, and we turned the rig on. Yeah, the fuse on the power supply went pop, and when we dug into it, we found that one of the silicone rectifiers was bad, and we found that there was a 30 ohm power resistor in a spot where there should have been a 30k ohm power resistor. We have replaced those and put a new fuse in it, and we have not powered it up yet. That's what we're going to do today. Now, the NCX3 HF rig itself, uh, this is the top of it, uh, as you can see with the tubes. Uh, I'm doing the camera work now, so it's not going to be as smooth and professional looking as when John does it, but this is it. As you can see, I still need to do some cleaning on the chassis surface. I'll do that last. Right now I'm just concerned with getting this thing up and running first. And um, we have gone into it and replaced... Placed, as you can see, um, a number of capacitors, some resistors, but for the most part, uh, everything in it was pretty good. Most of the resistors that needed to be higher tolerance already were fairly high tolerance, and they were all within tolerance. Um, one of the things that uh, we also did is in the manual that I got, uh, there was a lot of factory um, factory notices that came out during the time that this was, this was popular and new with a lot of different modifications and improvements that could be done to the circuit. We went through them all and for most part all of the ones the factory had recommended had already been done in this rig by a previous owner. So that was pretty good. Um, so, like I said, what we're going to do now, today, is we're going to power up the power supply and power up the rig, make sure we don't have anything else that goes pop. And uh, then we're going to tune around, 
see if we can pick up anything off of this slinky antenna if there's any activity out there on the bands today just just to get a preliminary uh, check on the receiver make sure all the tubes light up you know nothing goes gablooey or anything of that nature so um, that's what we're going to do uh, I will reposition the camera again uh, and I'll start filming and I'll just let the camera go and film while we do all that once we're ready to do it. So, Okay, well we're getting ready to um, power this on. While I've got it plugged, power supply plugged into my uh, Variac. And then the power supply uh, for the radio is plugged into the radio. And what we're going to do is... Hopefully to avoid any other pops, <laughs> we're going to bring this up slowly on the Variac. Um, make sure all the tubes light and there's no smoke anywhere and everything comes out good. And then once we've got it to full power, we let it warm up for a few minutes and then we're going to, uh, we're going to tune it for the uh, best receive noise and S meter reading. And then we're going to tune around, starting with the 80 meter band. I've got it at the very beginning of the band, and we're going to tune from one end of the dial to the other on each band to see if we can pick anything up on receive. So we're going to do that now. And I'm just going to let the camera run, you know, live while we're doing this. So, you know, there may be, probably will be some edits coming up. But <laughs> anyway, we're going to get started now. So I'm going to. Turn it on. Okay. Right now, I've got it set at 50 volts. Dial light's beginning to light. Did not blow a fuse. All right. So, this will take a little while. Uh, oh, tell them about the... Uh, where are they? No. Tell them about these dial lights that you've got for me that we're going to put in here later when we're done with all the testing. Okay, I ran across these on... Uh, the bay as they call it. These are LEDs that replace the uh, 44s and the 47s that are normally used in most any old radio. Uh, they do give off quite a bit of light and it's I like them. I've already used a few myself. And then you say that they're, they're used in pinball machines. Yeah, they were used in pinball machines. I happened to run across it on eBay. But that, that I'm going to replace the ones in here and if you can get me some more I'm going to replace some in some of my other rigs. And uh, that should save some some wear and tear on on the the rigs because it'll be that much less amperage that it has to draw. True. There. All right. So far, so good uh, at 50. Let's move it on up to 70 or thereabouts. Dial lights are getting brighter. That's yep, good. Yep, you can see the dial lights starting to start to come on there. Looking for some. No, we're not looking for some spot. No, I'm looking for some filament activity. It's still a little bit too low voltage for yeah. filaments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna turn that up a little bit so it does start. Start having some noise where you should hear it now. And we're going to be doing this in the, we're starting it up in the sideband mode, but once it's warmed up and, and everything, we've got noise, I'm going to switch it to AM mode so, to see if, because I'm more likely, I think, to pick up some shortwave stations than broadcast stations uh, this time of the day, particularly on 80 meters, um, maybe 40 meters, than I am. Uh, ham radio activity, but uh, we're going to try both and see what we can get. So far, no pops, no booms, no smoke, no sizzles, <laughs> which is always a good sign. Yeah. Especially when you've had this guy working on one of your Look out now. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I, I, these days, when my hands are shaky as they are, and I used to be able to do these by myself, I just can't do it anymore. Um, 
unless the chassis is really wide open and there's lots of space in between all the components uh, my shaky hands I get in there and it's tight and close and, and I got that hot hot tip of a soldering iron in there I'm liable to set fire to the whole thing <laughs> so 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 this guy does a lot of the soldering for me and I'm very very grateful for that um, he also helps me a lot with tracking down the problems although sometimes I help him with tracking down problems. That's true. It's, it works both it's, ways. It's a mutual effort. So, this guy has been doing this sort of thing a whole lot longer than I have. But uh, I think I have managed to teach you a thing or two. We always teach each other some things. <laughs> That's All cool. right, let's move it on up to 90. We might get some sound now. I'm not sure. I know with all my AM broadcast radios I've done, usually about the time I hit 90 volts, then I start hearing some sound, even if it's just hum. So far, we don't have anything. Else. You know what? Do we have? Do we have the speaker part plugged in? I believe we do. I wasn't sure. An actual speaker plug? Yeah, it goes into the Jones. It's tied okay, in that good, way. Okay, good, good. I just want to make sure we weren't sitting here looking dumb. <laughs> we got dumb, more dumb than usual. We have noise. We have noise? Yep. And yeah, um, yeah, we sure do. You will probably won't hear it, but we can hear it. And still no smoke, still no fire, <laughs> no sparks, fireworks. And we got some filament glow, at least some of these, the ones I can see right off. Ah, I think maybe we're cooking with gas. All right, let me move this on up. I believe we're going to hear something. 117, which is what I usually keep it on for these old rigs like this. Now my house current, my house voltage runs about 126, which is usually yeah, not too not high. Yeah. for these things so I try to keep it around 117 120 is what I have a very hard for you. yep you can hear it here it comes that's a good sign all right now well, let's see um, if we can peek it up can you watch the meter right. that was it back okay. it up back yep. it up just up here that's good right there. All right, let's check the excitement. Oh, it's going to get yeah. down. Back up, up, okay, right about there. Now we got the peak. All right, we'll see. All right. I'm turn it down a little bit. Let's put it on AM and see if we can find anything. Bear in mind that the only antenna we got this hooked up to is we threw a couple of clip leads. Is a, a it's a slinky antenna, the, a slinky dipole that I've got, got stretched across the ceiling. But it's always worked well for test purposes. Okay, I think that's a pretty cool sight. A vacuum tube transceiver in the dark. I'm in the middle of a very big experiment. <laughs>